the, the leather that we utilize for shoes and, um, and um, garments and belts and that type of thing is generally tan different than something that goes directly on your skin so that you don't have allergic reactions to it. Um, you don't have crocking, you don't have staining, the perspiration, that type of thing. So, um, you know, absolutely, I, I think the sources that they use, it's just like the automobile industry. I just did a car this last year and the whole, we gave the total direction for the finish that I wanted on the leather seats and everything down to the patina, everything that we did with it. But we had to go and have it developed at a manufacturer that does car seats because you can't, the car leathers because you're sitting in a $50,000 car and you get out with your white jeans and it's got like silver on it or something, that's not gonna go over very big, you know? Uh, or staining your seats with something else or whatever. So um, it's the same thing with the watches. It's gotta be something that's durable, that's water resistant, all the things that they so go into. So John's it. direction, I went to our strap supplier who's one of the top in the world, went with them to the tannery that supplies them and found all these amazing leathers that match the leather that he does but that we can use to build straps. What we really started off with though was really wanting to do something that was a little tougher and a little more masculine, so a chunkier strap, because most of the straps, uh, as you know, are very comfortable and soft. But, you know, they're also, m most of the straps come to more of a tapered point. This strap really is the same width all the way across and that, so I wanted something that felt a little chunkier, a little more masculine, a little tougher, a little vintage, yes. And so we kind of started with that point, um, and then what were the skins that we wanted to use? We found Caymanian crocodile that was tanned in a special way, an African crocodile. So we found leathers that actually looked vintage, but without destroying them. So that was step one, or bison, because it has a more rough leather kind of look. But now we even have something very exciting in you for the fall that'll look very different than anything anybody's ever done for the watch world. And that's the most exciting about being able to work with John is being able to bring things into this environment which he would support, which is maybe not, it's not regular. It's not what standard high-end watch industry companies are doing. So he allows us to be a little bit more creative. So I'm more excited than anything that he's saying that he's going to push me more because that lets me do more things. The straps themselves, we're actually releasing for the fall because of the success of the way that they offer straps in the stores. We are releasing for the fall a new quick release strap system for Ernst Benz so that the customers themselves can actually change the straps because, as you see, we have quite a collection of straps that we develop ourselves and then, as we mentioned, and specifically to be able to wardrobe your watch. I mean, a great watch has always been the gentleman's accessory. If it was Einstein, if it was any of the men who we always admired, if it was Warhol, if it's Varvatos himself, a great watch was always the accessory of intellectual and brilliant men. This is, this is already all available in the stores. What John was explaining is now that they're building vestibules for us, where the strap kit is actually part of the vestibule. It's not just a tray that's inside the drawer that you might have to remember to ask for, that it is an integral part of the experience of being able to select the watch, lay down the watch, select the strap, select everything personally for yourself, and that you can leave from the store with the watch that way. And if you ask for additional personalization, the watch is personalized and then, for, and then sent to you. And in a such project like with John, I get to push more than everybody else. Even the packaging for the watch was an interesting collaboration. John won a lot of awards for design and one of them is for packaging awards. He had drawn a box for Corzo Tequila that they thought was too complicated to build and too expensive. So when he showed me the rendering, I said, that's perfect, that's right up our alley. So we had actually made a box. It's made out of the leather that John uses for the bags. It looks like the shape of a shoe box, has a unique opening, his signature whip stitching, a special design uh, for closing that he designed, and winter uh, wrapped Swiss material all inside. Actually, our packaging supplier is one of the top in the world. It's the second most expensive box he's ever made. But it's, everything for this is more about design. It's not just about, this isn't a commercial venture, how many watches we can make, how many watches we can sell. For me, it's really about how cool we can make it, and he allows me to make it as cool as we can.